Welcome back to another installment of Classical Conversations on FM 91. I'm Mary Claire Murphy, and joining me video, via video conference today is Norwegian violinist uh, Elsbjerg Kemsing. And she is releasing her new album come February, so just around the corner. It's called Arctic. And this is a way that she combines her passion for music with her passion for the Arctic landscape. So we're very, very excited about to hear this. Elbjörg, thank you so much for joining us. It's good to have you here. Oh, thank you. It's such a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you for having me. Before we talk about the album itself, could you tell us just a little bit about how you uh, initially were inspired to uh, play violin and what piqued your interest about the mm -hmm. Arctic? I just am curious how these two worlds converged. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I grew up in the countryside of Norway in a little teeny tiny village of 600 people in the middle wow. of nowhere, I would say, <laughs> very close to the mountain chain of uh, Jotunheimen. Um, and I very much grew up with um, parents who, on one side, my mom, she's also a violinist, mm -hmm. um, which I must say is the big influence for me starting to play the violin. And mm -hmm. then my father worked in nature with environment and, and uh, in that direction of things. So I very much grew up with music and nature from a young age, and mm -hmm. it became so much the um the normal inspiration in a way to look into nature to find yeah. music there and then in the playing it was all about finding the purity and uh, the long lines and the kind of beauty of nature there as well so for me those two has always been mm -hmm. very uh linked wow okay so music yeah. from your mother and then nature yes. from your father <laughs> and here you are <laughs> there you go <laughs> um, as a professional violinist i'm sure you have spent hours upon hours, you know, practicing and performing on your instrument, and I'm sure you have a connection with the instrument. Could you tell us about <laughs> the violin that you performed on for Arctic? Oh yeah, for sure. I, I am super lucky to play on a really, really unique instrument uh, from 1707. It's wow. uh, Antonio Stradivarius, and it's from Cremona. And this one has the name Rivas. And oh my what is so incredibly special about it apart from it surviving all these years and still mm -hmm. being in good condition is just the people who have played on it before it was the legendary violinist Josef Joachim who played on it in the 1800s and before me was the Janine Janssen and it's just been it's just an incredible instrument it's so warm and rich and very brilliant and yet has this deep deep soul in the sound wow. and I'm so incredibly lucky to have this from a foundation in Norway called Dextra Musica. And when we recorded, I uh, sort of put together the repertoire for this recording, I knew I just really wanted to play off a little bit of the sound world that this mm -hmm. violin can give uh, and just kind oh, of okay. explore that palette. Oh my goodness, my mind is blown right now. So 1707, <laughs> you said, a historical <laughs> instrument. That feels really mm -hmm. perfect for the subject matter. I mean, the, Arctic's been around for ages, so why not play on an instrument <laughs> that has seen a lot of performers too? Um, set the stage for us real quick before we get into talking about the album. Uh, when in your adventures with your father out into um, nature, what are some Arctic scenes that come to mind? Um, things that you remember as being especially beautiful or inspiring? Well, how much time do we have? It's, it's so many things I could talk about. But uh, um, even though I grew up um, underneath the Arctic Circle, I spent a lot of time up in the Arctic. And I think the thing that really struck me so much is, I mean, it's almost hard to explain with words. I mean, in many ways, how we all live now, of course, in cities or in villages, you kind of, I guess, take for granted that it's our space. We live mm -hmm. there and then you kind of nature is secondary. Right. Whereas in the Arctic, it's exactly opposite. The nature is really the, the force. It's the power. You can't really do anything about it. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you travel in the far north and it's bad weather, well, you might be three or five days late for your arrival, but that's just how it is. <laughs> and you just kind of have to deal with that constantly. <laughs> you just don't have the you know you can't really like fight against nature there because mm -hmm. it's just such a that's just how it is the force is so strong 
But um, I think there are so many memories I have from growing up in the, in the, that very nat natural landscape. Mm -hmm. For instance, even being high up in the mountains and seeing these incredibly strong little flowers called saxifraga uh, grow mm -hmm. through the, the rocks and, and go through and surviving any season. And it's just this teeny tiny little flower who you think I could just pick it up and it would be, you know, not live anymore. But somehow it's so, um, it has so much life. Yeah. And I think that's um, many one of very, very many things I could talk about, or even just the silence that you also find out in nature. Mm -hmm. So much yeah. life and silence. It's incredible. <laughs> I think when, sometimes when we think about the Arctic, or at least when I think about the Arctic, I think of, you know, something barren and stark, but actually there's so much life happening and you just have to look closer and you just have to be immersed in it like you say Absolutely. so i think i definitely get that sense from you just like <laughs> this is you know a, a thriving ecosystem too um in its own way it so definitely is when did you first have the idea that you wanted to make this album it's been a, a kind of a passion project for quite a few years i I think the idea came a bit when the first time I went up to um, uh, Spitsbergen, so the island of, that belongs to Norway, but that's the last stop before the North Pole, basically, <laughs> really far north. And it's uh, in Longyearbyen, one of the main cities there. And I still remember this um, incredible feeling once I just landed on this island, just could see the, just feel this like magnetic belonging mm -hmm. to it. And it was just so, it definitely did something with the whole feeling of this is not something that everyone can explore or even experience. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit like you mentioned, like the, I think that a lot of the picture about the Arctic is very like, like stark and difficult and hard and dark yeah. and all those things. <laughs> and it's it kind of, it's just, it's so much life and so much beauty. And yeah. that's why I wanted, really wanted to try and make a musical journey through the region and, and show a little bit different sides. For sure. Well, we're very excited to take that journey. How did you decide on the music you were going to program on the album? It was, in many ways, quite a challenge to kind of find a musical expression to what is much easier to say with words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but ultimately, what I really wanted to was to um, try and find a way to show a little bit of all that life and preserve the memory of the beauty and show what is there now. I, I think there's there's obviously a lot of um, amazing albums and talks and and uh, attention on the Arctic, but mm -hmm. I found that very often it was all about the devastating effect, about mm. the doomsday kind of approach, and it it kind of always left me feeling incredibly anxious and mm -hmm. a bit like there's no hope kind of feeling, and though right. that's you no, know, you it is, it is definitely devastating what's happening, but there is also so much life that we need to preserve. Um, so that was kind of the soundscape I wanted to be in. A lot of optimism and light and mm -hmm. just beauty. And then at the same time, also touch upon some of those things that the um, ice is melting. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much hidden life, but you also can't see it. So you might not be aware that we need to look after it. You know, there, mm -hmm. A lot of the titles are very, um, very much linked to nature, obviously. Mm -hmm. So you're taking a very nurturing approach with the positivity and celebrating the beauty of nature and how we can protect that. Um, that's that's a really nice perspective, I think. Um, oh, could good. you give us a, a quick summary of some of the different composers on the album? And is there a centerpiece to this project? Yes. So a lot of the compositions on this uh, recording are by living composers. Mm -hmm. And this was also something as a classical musician, I thought was quite important not to only choose um, music that's already been around for a long time, but create something new. Mm -hmm. And the centerpiece is by a fantastic composer called Jakob Shea from Bleeding Fingers Music, who created a 20 minute um, centerpiece. Um, so it's called Arctic Suite mm -hmm. and it's six movements and it really takes you through the whole, uh, everything from the frozen world, the winter time, to when the sun finally comes back and you can see life again, there's mm -hmm. a rush of life and then yeah. there's uh, just a whole cycle basically of the north in that piece uh, with full symphony orchestra and it's really just really, really beautiful melodies that he's created. And then I um, also wanted to 
be uh, including in, in the far north, there's also the indigenous people from called Sami. I have a very good friend of mine who is a fantastic composer and a musician. His name is Frode Fjellheim. And he comes from the Sami tribe. And I asked him to create two pieces for this recording. One is called The Return of the Sun, which always happens in January when you can see the first seconds of sunlight again. And it's, uh -huh. a, it's a whole celebration. <laughs> and then the other one is under the Arctic moon to kind of also have that perspective in a way into the recording. Um, and as well, there's also pieces by um, uh, Finnish and Swedish composers, um, Rautavara and, and Palmgren. And as a Norwegian, I also had to pick a few other <laughs> of the Norwegian melodies. Absolutely. Uh, so there's also a gig in Ullebull, but also one a very famous melody in Norway called Vårsök. Wow. Okay. So I will say I got a little preview of the music on the album. There's a lot to listen to. <laughs> and I loved it, by the way. Um, oh, I feel like when I listened, <laughs> it very much put me in the Arctic space, in that landscape, in kind of a almost meditative type state, thinking about this beauty. And I just wondered if you had, for your listeners to this album, do you have any recommendations about the mindset or the posture that we bring into our listening process? And I guess by that I mean... You know, are we listening with our eyes closed? Are we laying down? Are we listening to the album in order? Or do we jump around? <laughs> do you have any guidance for how we should listen? <laughs> That's a fun question. Um, <laughs> I think of this very much as um, it is definitely a musical journey. It's kind of like an audiovisual experience in many ways because it's so, uh, I hope it will trigger mental images and, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, feelings that's associated with it. Um, I think it's um, the best way is just to listen um, as you would listen to anything, just with an open mind and a lot of curiosity. And then I hope it gives also um, a very peaceful experience. Okay. Um, there is not so much, you know, ice cracking and melting and all those things. It's just mm -hmm. this very calming um, musical journey. Wow. Okay. Good to know. Well, I know you have to hop off the call here shortly, so we'll leave it at that. But uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, this is Elbjörg Hemsing that I've been speaking with about her new album, Arctic. It's coming out in February of this year, right around the corner. Um, so we just cannot wait to hear that music. And it's good to speak with you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you.